Um, we're going to be seeing um, uh, Drake's ult, Arcanine, Gastrodon, Grimmsnarl, Corviknight, and the Rillaboom against the Venusaur, uh, Togekiss, Dustlops, Tyranitar, Torkoal, and the Corviknight. Yeah, I, I think uh, the, both teams have some interesting things going on there. Uh, Drake's ult is obviously one that you have to call out. Uh, you know, we can't just uh, completely uh, rule it out. It's something that kind of pops up from time to time and, and puts in a good amount of work. We do see definitely uh, before hitting the, the confirm button, uh, we're looking at it from Miguel's point of view. So, you know, yeah. it's going to be Bartosz's team over on the left there. And that fantastic new screen, and that's actually one of my favorite additions uh, in the, the, the update is being able to see both kind of teams at once. Uh, but definitely mulling it, mulling it over. You know, there's threats coming from multiple directions there that you have to worry about. And you, you've always got to bring an answer to Dust Cops. If you don't want to play in Trick Room, you've got to bring an answer to it. I mean, the, the Gastrodon would usually be a, you know, a, a really solid pick against Trick Room. But when you're looking at Venusaur, when you're looking at Torkoal that can cause some problems, it's probably got to stay at home. Yeah, I think Miguel's Pokemon, like the, the team composition that he has <clears throat> answers a lot of threats, the individual Pokemon that is. And then he has that cheeky little Drake result, which is such a pow powerhouse of a Pokemon. If it is Life Orb boosted, Hustle boosted in Dynamax, it is an absolute monster. And uh, I think the Corviknight could have a good matchup, excluding that Tortoll that we actually see coming out from Bartosh's side. Um, accompanied by that Venusaur, so full Sun Mode coming out from Bartosh. But we are going to be seeing the Arcanine and Grimmsnarl coming out from Miguel's side. Um, and the Sun will be set, of course, thanks to that Tortoll's Drought ability. Yeah, and I think Torkoal and Venusaur are obviously a potent pairing when put together. They can cause a number of problems. But I think Miguel's seen that in team preview and responded pretty well to it, actually. Obviously, Grimmsnarl has access to a huge amount of support moves uh, that can slow that down through either setting up screens or, or you know, just paralyzing stuff or what, basically whatever it wants. Uh, and then yeah. alongside that, you've got the Arcanine that's just saying, well, if you're, if you're gonna get Sun, that's great. I really appreciate that because I'm also gonna take advantage of it and try and use it to my own advantage. And we are gonna be seeing the Dynamax come out from that G-Max Venusaur on Bartosh's end, wanting to go ahead and deal huge amounts of damage output perhaps, or also even going ahead and trying to get some Max Ooze boost onto the Grimmsnarl. Uh, but we're actually going to see the Grimmsnarl go for a light screen. First off, trying to mitigate as much damage output coming out from Bartosh's Pokemon. But no, we're going to see a Max Quake come out. Thanks to that light screen, doesn't actually pick up a KO if that's a Life Orb boosted Venusaur onto that Arcanine. Does boost the special defense of both the Tortoise and the Venusaur on Bartosh's end. And we do see the Life Orb reveal. Whilst Arcanine is just going to be going for that very safe snarl um really really limiting bartosh's damage output definitely on the special side that both of his pokemon are relying on we are going to be seeing an eruption come out from that Torkoal, not dealing as much damage as, as it would have liked whilst actually proccing that arcanine's berry uh which could actually be a um uh super berry which we do see whilst the grimstar is able to take that like a champ as well yeah grimstar uh, just really holding on there and i, I... Do you think the snarls are very kind of slow roll play there? It's just taking time, saying, you know what, I do need to to try and deal with you in a in a in a sensible way, um, you know, just slowing things down a little bit. Uh, but you know, he manages to hold on. The Arcanine gets his berry consumed, uh, which does help it hold on. I think another Max Quake. Uh, this one will of course be impacted by the snarl. Uh, but he's not going to get you know another boost from something like Light Screen. So has yeah. to be kind of careful. Uh, in, in how he plays out this turn, but even if, you know, he does fall for the Max Quake, that's actually two turns of Venusaur's Gigantamax that's not getting the advantage from. Uh, and the fact that T Torkoal really didn't do enough damage to to make much note of, uh, means the Togekiss is going to come in in its place. Wow, and we're actually going to see the Togekiss come in, and I'm unsure 100% on what that move was. It could have actually been a Thunder Wave from the Grimmsnarl. Uh, we are going to be seeing the Max Quake come out into the Arcanine, from that Venusaur doesn't actually pick up a KO. It was actually, in fact, a taunt from the Grimmsnarl, trying to make sure that once the Venusaur is done out of its uh, Gigantamax turns, it doesn't get any cheeky sleep powders off. Whilst we are going to be seeing the Arcanine that did survive go for the Snarl, further reducing that special attack output of that Venusaur. Yeah, and I think this is actually a really good kind of stalling out of the G-Max Venusaur here, saying, you know what, 
Uh, you, you only have three turns. I haven't used my Dynamax yet, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah. And taunting it for later. Very smart, very forward thinking as well. And that's something that uh, I think Miguel has to be credited for, saying, you know what, you have Sun. I don't have an answer to Sun right now. Uh, yeah. And I'm worried about Sleep Powder afterwards. So while Grim Snarl wasn't exactly needed to do anything else, you know, you could have set up a preemptive reflect maybe. Uh, I really like the, the use of Taunt there. Um, we talked about Taunt a little bit over the course of the weekend. And, and yeah, it, it does a really good job there, setting up for future. Uh, there's yeah. going to be another one as well. <laughs> There's going to be another one into the Tokyo's trying to shut down any potential yawns or follow me's. And we are going to be seeing a G Max Vine Lash come out from that Venusaur, hoping to pick up a KO on the Arcanine and set its overall um, uh, damage uh, through chip turns in the next few turns. But it lands onto a Corviknight that completely shrugs that off whilst the core uh, the toad kiss on Baratosh's side is going to go for that dazzling gleam and be able to pick up some good damage after we do see that gmax vine lash chip damage at the end of that turn yeah the, the gmax vine lash damage is actually so so problematic because it just doesn't care about any of the boosts you've got and just doing that percent health really really nasty to to try and slow it down uh, that grim has been on the field for the whole game right now as well and just being able to sit there and, you know, not really take that much damage and, and kind of disrupt your opponent that much is so valuable and, and so yeah. underrated at times. Yeah, 100%. And just being able to go ahead and just mitigate your opponent's damage so well and just shut their mode completely down because Bartosh right now has just wasted, not wasted, but he's used up his Dynamax turns. Whilst on Miguel's side, he, ha he hasn't even needed to go for Dynamax because he's in such a good position with shutting down Bartosh's strategy. Whilst uh, Bartosh does recognize that, switches out the Venusaur, for the in uh, for the dust flops right now does get that frisk ability proccing and talking about dynamax we're gonna actually see miguel go for one right now it will more than likely be this corviknight which at the current point in time has a really good matchup against his opponent's pokemon as, uh, unless of course the tortoise is able to maneuver itself in a good position but nevertheless you never want to face down a, a double hp corviknight that can just go and threaten so much damage it completely shrugs that dazzling gleam but unfortunately for the grim style does not which it does get critical hitted as well does go down to uh that target hit. max airstream on the corvanite does come out this time round deals good amount of damage very respectable thanks to that critical hit as well ladies and gents does get that plus one max airstream going and we do know that Togekiss has been taunted, so it will not be able to redirect unless the taunt turns do end very soon. Yeah, and this is interesting. He, uh, Miguel did bring the Drake result, but didn't actually save it to, to Dynamax that, just relying on the Corviknight, uh, feeling like that's the way to go right now. So uh, I like the, the Corviknight being Dynamax, but it does mean we get to play the fun game with Drake Result and see if it can land all its moves with, with without any problems. If it lands them, I think Miguel's going to be in a great position. If it misses, yeah. uh, things could get a little dicey, uh, but overall, it, it should be feeling pretty good. I mean, it's not like it's a 50-50. It's still in, Corv uh, in Drake Result's favor. And this Corviknight's going to be able to sit on the field and, and just cause problems. Yeah, that's very true. I think Corviknight's in a very prime position right now. Barring any trick rooms being set up and the Torkoal being brought in in that situation, which I think is Bartosh's way out right now. He just really needs to think hard on how he can actually take advantage of that. Max Steel Spike does come out from the Corviknight uh, into the Toad. Just doesn't actually pick up a KO. And uh, there was no Baberry Berry, so that's a very bulky uh, Toad Kiss. Whilst maybe not as offensive of a Corviknight, Dazzling Gleam does come out once again. Does deal good, a bit the relative chip damage onto the Drake result. Uh, whilst a Volpe does land onto the Dustlops, and it looks like it picks up the KO, ladies and gents. So that Trick Room mode that Bartosh was maybe hoping to go for is no longer effective and uh, present in the current match whilst the, the sun actually does expire. Yeah, I mean, we see the the problem being left behind by that Venusaur as well. Uh, but the light screen has just been so important here. I mean, I think if you get more damage down uh, early on, this is, this is a lot easier to handle. But that Corviknight still sitting pretty. Uh, maybe just kind of testing the waters, potential to game two and three, saying, oh, we'll, we'll test out the Babiri Berry, right? Yeah. We'll see what you got. Obviously getting good damage down. Uh, and just saying, I I'm confident in my Drake result to, to hit its attacks. and and get exactly what it needs. So a really good position for Miguel here. Uh, Bartosz really kind of struggling, I think, with some of that early 
defense set up and then you know a lot of options to try and find an opening or shut down by those constant talks as well. Venusaur's back, uh, but now's probably not the best time for it. No, it's definitely not the best time for it because uh, it doesn't have the sun up right now, so it's not in the best of situations. But that Torkoal can be an easy bring in, maybe trying to bait out Miguel's uh, turns because the Corviknight has a plus one uh, in speed stat, right? The Drake result does not. So if this Venusaur is max speed in sun, it should be outspeeding both of his opponents. But the Corviknight is just... It's in a situation where it can, it's not threatened. It's not completely threatened. The only thing that's threatening it is a Torkoal, and the Torkoal is definitely going to be under speeding. So I'm not sure how Bartosh could try to maneuver around the situation. Maybe a Sleep Powder onto the Corviknight if it does land could be a very big thing. Uh, but before that, we're going to see a the Drake result go for a Protect on Miguel's side. What? Uh, no uh, br uh, bringing in of any Torkoals, just a very safe. Follow me, redirection from that Toad Kiss. Whilst the Corviknight does actually drive for the max airstream, does bring the Drake result to plus one, whilst the Corviknight itself to plus two. Maybe trying to better its situation in case of a Tortoise switching. Uh, does, of course, pick up a KO onto the Toad Kiss. The real question is, what does the Venusaur go for? Uh, it went potentially for a Earth Power into the Drake result right there and wasn't actually able to pick up a KO, of course, because the Drake result was able to protect itself. Yeah, I mean, the Drake result protecting, still taking uh, a bunch of damage left over from the previous Venator, Venusaur, uh, and it's, it's Vines that it left behind giving out that beating. Uh, but overall, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting position to be in. I Miguel's mean, kind of been in the driving seat. I uh, got some really good value out of his Dynamax turns. But even though he saw this right at the beginning of the game, he's now not in the strongest position. I mean, there's, there is, of course, the boosts from the Max Airstream, but only one onto the Drake result. And this is going to be a full five turns of sun. We do see uh, the confirmation there. Uh, we do get a little bit of uh, extra information as well. Uh, not uncommon to see the, the light clay on the Grimmsnarl there. And looking at the way he's got eight turns of it mapped out on his side, uh, yeah. he is going to be, you know, for at least the next two turns doing well. But Corviknight and Drake Assault are both pretty low. Um, yeah. You know, they're both below half health, and it's not going to take that much. The Arcanine also dangerously low. Uh, you know, we see how low it is right now. Uh, maybe need to switch around to, to buy a bit of time. And I do see that this Venus Run Tokal are going to be a real issue to handle. Yeah, I think uh, very well played from Bartosz. He was able to outlast and uh, chip away his opponent's Pokemon over time, which proved to be quite crucial. The Arcanine does switch in now uh, instead of the Dracozole, which does switch out. Earth Power does come out from the Venusaur. Will definitely be picking up a KO on a very low HP Arcanine. So Arcanine's out for this game. The Torkoal, if it isn't stopped right now, it is going to have a very free turn to deal damage onto the Corviknight. Brave Bird actually comes out from the Corviknight, does pick up a KO on the Venusaur, will be getting recoil damage, putting it critically low, and uh, Eruption actually comes out from the Torkoal, might not have Heat Wave because uh, might have, or maybe perhaps Bartosh wasn't actually scared of any damage being inflicted onto him, but now we are in a one versus one situation, Adam. <laughs> the real question on everybody's minds, will Drakazot land a Balti? Yep, uh, this really just comes down to can Drake Assault hit its attack? If it hits its attack, Miguel wins. If he doesn't, then, you know, Bartosz can just fire back and, and easily pick up a knockout there. So, a really close game, really good board management by both players to to establish what they, they see as their win condition. Bartosz identifying uh, that lead that he had actually needed to be saved for later and used at a different time, uh, yeah. setting up for that very, very well after those early Gigantamax turns from the Venusaur. But Miguel identifying if he can deal with Venusaur, which he knew he could do with Corviknight, then he can get, you know, of course, the Drake Assault in. And yeah, there's a little bit of gamble to it. It's a little bit of a risk. But as long as it lands, he's in peak, peak position uh, for yeah. this one. Yeah, I think so. And uh, Miguel actually taking his time there, maybe trying to strategize on going into game two, thinking about his options. Because right now, it's literally a situation where Volpe, if he is going to go for it, it's probably going to be the first move in his slot. So he's just letting time go down. 
just to think about whether he's going to go for Bolt Beak, goes for a potential Earthquake. Uh, I think Bolt Beak would be able to deal even more damage upwards, so it's the real question on does he land it and does it pick up the KO? Oh, and we're actually going to see it land, ladies and gents. Is it enough to pick up the KO is the real question, and it is rewarding Miguel that game one and uh, being able to force Bartosz into a uh, back onto his uh, back hill of course in game two having to reconsider his game plan to be honest yeah I, I think Bartosz did what he could you know he had a really good start with the the Venusaur uh, but you know we, we talked about a little bit in the game I think Miguel did a really good job of, of stalling that out and saving his Dynamax to a time that was, was more premium for him. You know, Arcanine and Grimstyle did really, really well together. Uh, that light screen was, was a really big problem. I mean, there's so many things on, on Bartosz's team that were relying on their special attacks, right? And yeah, as soon as that's taken away from you, if you don't have Brick Break, um, you know, if we look at it now, Venusaur relies on special attacks, Togekiss, and Torkoal as well. So, you know, with those three and a Dusclops, that light screen got maximum value. And it was there for all of the game as well. Yeah, that's very true because uh, I think if it, it was a light clay Grimmsnarl, so a very supportive Grimmsnarl, being able to further extend that overall support, it wasn't able to be uh, stopped at any point because it was just there for quite a few turns, wasn't it, Adam? So it was able to completely utilize its situation, create, uh, allow its teammates to be even more bulky and position Miguel in the situation where he just brings Dracozol in, he lands two Bolt Beaks and he could win. He got that Bolt Beak on that Dust Lop, was able to pick up the KO, shut down any potential Trick Room um, coming out from Bartosz's side, and then he was able to deal that huge, critical one-hit KO move onto that Tortol, being able to reward him in that game one. Yeah, and I think something that's interesting in an interaction that uh, you know I, I like to kind of focus on is, is knowledge of the meta game. So right at the end, uh, I think what's important is obviously the Venusaur was in the sun. That's a really good time for it. Yes, there was, of course, the, the Max Air streams up, but uh, he just decides, you know, I'm not going to try and sleep out of the, the Corviknight at any point, which is kind of really a good read on the meta game from, from Bartosz, even though it didn't you know, open up the door. At least he didn't waste a turn. Uh, he does go for the Max Break instead because so many Corviknight now have been carrying a Lumberry or even safety goggles True. that you just can't sleep powder it. And I think... An optimal play like that in a win or a loss is, is worth calling out. Uh, a knowledge of the meta game really does separate you know, top players from, from others. Uh, that's what will win you a, a lot more games. So I just wanted oh, to make a, make, yeah. a, make a big deal. I mean, that's a very fair point, to be honest, because it's all about that awareness and that knowledge, because VGC is a game where knowledge is such a huge part of it, if not the biggest. Um, but yeah, we're actually going to see the Toad Kiss and Venusaur coming out from Bartosz's side this time round. Uh, with the Arcanine and Grimmsnarl once again coming out from Miguel. Uh, I think Miguel is trying to opt for more of the safe situation, safe lead from his situation. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, Miguel just, just trying to keep going uh, with, with what he did. Uh, probably another light screen coming through, of course, that uh, Grimmsnarl doesn't really appreciate uh, some of those moves that are on the field. The Dust Clubs comes in nice and early, uh, so certainly interesting. There it is. Uh, there's the light screen. Um, yeah. Just going right up. This is going to be another problem. Yeah, this is going to be another problem for Bartosh uh, if he's not able to shut down Miguel's strategy. We do see the Heat Wave coming out from the Arcanine, dealing chip damage onto both the Dust Lots and the Togekiss, whilst that Togekiss is able to retaliate with a Dazzling Gleam. But we're in a situation where the Togekiss can just redirect and allow Dust Clubs to get the trick from up, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the oldest trick in the book. Uh, redirection and trick roll, it's, it's come up a few times recently. Uh, really, really tough to, to try and deal with that. Um, you know, you've got some spread moves in Heat Wave, but Grimmsnarl can't shut it down at all. And it looks like Miguel's just repositioning his board for, for when that goes up, really. Yeah, and we are going to see the Corviknight come in, and uh, the Follow Me comes out from the Toad Kiss. Uh, just wanting to guarantee that safe trick room setup. Heatwave does come out from the Arcanine, does pick up a burn, as well as further chip damage onto both the Tokyo and Dust Lops. And talking about Dust Lops, it gets what it wanted. The trick room is up. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I think Bartosz needs, but Miguel's responded to that so well. Corviknight and Arcanine aren't at all threatened right now. Um, they're, they're pretty chilled out by the whole affair, and, and particularly Corviknight could, could start to cause some problems. Um, you know, it's got 
a really good typing in this matchup. It, he's probably not too scared of anything the Togekiss can throw. And uh, as we all know, Dusclops is limited in its damage output. So it could be time once again for the Corviknight to shine. Uh, does have to be careful. You know, you don't want to be firing off max air streams willy nilly, uh, boosting your speed in a trick room. Maybe for later. Uh, and we do yeah. see, obviously, on his side, um, we do get that insight into what he's doing. It looks like he's just going to kind of hold off a little bit uh, on the Dynamax there. Maybe save it uh, for something a little more important to his team. I think it makes sense because in the end of the day, you want to be able to just outlast this trick room as best as you can. And being able to just uh, preserve that Dynamax is such a crucial thing. Um, we're going to see the, uh, the Dustlops actually switch out for the Toll Call this time around. Bringing the Sun, this might just be a safe follow me play, hoping to just try to guarantee that Portal to be uh, safely brought in. Whilst the Arcan is actually going to switch out for the Drakazor, but... Oh my word, we're gonna see the Dynamax coming out. It looks like it's gonna be from Bartosh's side and it's gonna be this Togekiss, which is definitely not what you would expect in this situation. Very well played. Oh my lord, if this is a Max Starfall into the Draco uh, Zolt slot, I am going to freak out. It's gonna be amazing, unless it is a Heat Wave Max Flare boosted. Uh, from the sun, Iron Head comes out from the core and I goes into the Togekiss, is not able to pick up a KO, but this is a Max Flare. Oh, just missing the one hit KO onto that Corviknight, unfortunately for Bartosz, but very smart strategy of going about that turn. Yeah, I, I think Bartosz making kind of the, the premium option there was Corviknight's the problem, and I have an answer to deal with it. He does have to switch in the, the Torkoal, but there it is. There's the light screen coming back around and, and causing problems. You know, usually that would be an easy knockout with the sun. But light screen so so valuable in this instance and, and Corviknight is sitting on the field you know i think the togekiss there has to dynamax uh, as as weird as it sounds just because you need that extra health bar to to be able to take uh, steel type attacks and, and it does yeah. that well but it doesn't get the knockout in return and i really think that that takes the wind out of bartosh's sails a little bit yeah i think you're right uh we're actually gonna see the arcanine switch out uh switch in sorry for that corviknight in the previous turn corviknight just wanting to have a bit of a rest from that very hot day and experience is having right now um we are gonna be seeing miguel go for the dynamax uh don't forget ladies and gents fire it does resist fire type moves this drake result so unless there's a max starfall going into it and it's able to pick up a ko this drake result is gonna be highly threatening um, we do see the Dynamax come out. The Torkoal will be moving first under Trick Room and does go for an eruption from what it looks like. Deals chip damage onto both the Drake Result and the Arcanine, which of course resists, but no, this Drake Result moves first, ladies and gents, and is enough to pick up the KO, of course, thanks to its Max Lightning Life Orb boosted um, uh, hustle ability um, move and being able to pick up the KO onto the Toad Kiss making sure that the electric terrain is not only set but in this situation Bartosh is having to really think about what to bring in maybe a dust gloves and try to whittle down Miguel's Pokemon but I'm not sure yeah this trick room's actually really hurt Bartosh uh purely because he, you know he's then relied on his token kiss in the following few turns yeah his talk is gonna be able to take advantage of it but he's not facing off against things that can hit easily uh with the eruption so it's been a pretty tough time for him in the trick room his togekiss was was actually moving after a number of pokemon on miguel's side so uh, you know a kind of slower team right there even though he doesn't have a trick room setter of his own he's very comfortable playing in it and that's been really really key uh, we'll see exactly how much the drake belt can get out but it's not threatened at all by the torkoal Yes, not threatened at all by the Torkoal, uh, dealing small damage that it really, really does not want. Nightshade does come out from the Dust Clubs as well, double up into the Drake result. Is it enough to pick up the KO? But this Max Weight is more than enough to pick up the KO from that Drake result onto the Torkoal, making sure that Bartosh, even though he's got his Trick Room going, the Torkoal was on the field, it didn't have the sufficient answers it needed against Miguel's approach to this game too. And we do see the Heat Wave powered by the Sun uh, currently on the field, single target onto the Dust Clops, dealing good chip damage overall onto a very bulky Pokemon in the form of that Dust Clops. Yeah, getting so much value out of that Heat Wave. Uh, it's in the Sun, it's single target. Uh, it's really, really good. And the Sun up, Venusaur coming in while Trick Room is still in play. Uh, it's certainly uh, suboptimal to say the least. Uh, yeah. Sun's got a couple more turns to go and uh, you see Miguel inspecting that there in his 
information screen thinking, oh, I'm probably feeling pretty good about this right now. Uh, so, you know, the Dusk Ops isn't really threatening him with, with damage. Uh, so we should just be able to, to focus on the Venusaur for a little bit, you know, with those two turns of Trick Room that we saw remaining in the menu, uh, and go from there. So I think Miguel has capitalized on this Trick Room better than Bartosh, and that's kind of one of those uh, sneaky little issues with team building. Uh, to see how we go, we see Dusk Ops trying to go first, uh, but Dragon Ball can to fire right back. Oh yeah, and Dragon Ops just going to go ahead and pick up the one-hit KO onto that Venusaur. This Drakazol is just running wild, ladies and gents. Not a lot of people account for Drakazol, but I think Drakazol has a very strong position in the current format, given the situations as well of the matchups. Heatwave from the Arcanine, not quite enough to pick up the KO onto Dusclops. It is single target in the sun, but this is guaranteeing pretty much the game for Miguel. Oh yeah, there's, there's the end of Trick Room, and... Uh... It's probably the worst time for it, right? You know, this, yeah. the Dust Cops is on its own. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, I can't imagine we're going to see much more out of it. Uh, Drake is all switching out. Uh, Grimmsnarl just coming back in. Uh, making sure it reminds Bartosh that it was there and it caused so many problems with its light screen. The single target in the sun. Heat wave from an Arcanine is enough to tidy up, no doubt about that. And uh, a fantastic set, uh, but Miguel takes it pretty comfortably in two games. Yeah, that was very, very impressive show of understanding with regards to the board management um, from Miguel. I mean, also from Bartosz as well, because he recognized at that current point, given how game one turned out for him, he thought maybe going trick room and getting a bit more safe is the way, is the play. And initially, at first, he thought, okay, it looks like he's getting the trick room going. He had the situation where he brought the toad kiss in, the dust lips was on the field. You get Trick Room going, you're just going to be able to deal good amounts of damage, but that didn't really work out for um, his whole strategy about it because the fact that Miguel had the correct Pokemon in the correct situation that he could just try to rotate in, the Drake result does not care about Tortol unless for some reason there's a Max Quake Dynamax from the Tortol and it deals huge amounts of damage, but it's still tough because Dynamax doubles the HP of the, your Pokemon. So it probably wouldn't have been able to pick up a one-hit KO. Yeah, I, I think it was it was a bit of a team mismatch at, at that point. You know, there was sort of a, a split between Trick Room mode and a Sun mode, and and Game 2 really kind of didn't didn't land either very successfully. So, uh, you know, credit to, to Bartosz. He, he definitely made it uh, as good a game as possible uh, for, for both, you know, us and the, and the viewers at home. Uh, oh, but, you know... On the on the same side of it, I think Miguel was was always in control, particularly in game two. Yeah, I think I think it's like you said, it was a mismatch of matchups. Um, I think it looked like at first on paper, hey, Bartosz has a really solid uh, core going about his uh, situation. He's got the trick room, he's got the sun, he's uh, got certain answers. But at the same point, Miguel just had all of the answers to um, Bartosz's answers. So very well played from them. Uh, Miguel will go ahead and award Spain that crucial point in their match against Poland, ladies and gents, which will be decided by tonight. So please stay tuned as well. We're going to cut to a short break and we are going to be having the match of Jonathan Marston uh, versus Lucas. It's going to be United Kingdom uh, versus Austria, a very highly anticipated match from what I've been told because Austria, United Kingdom, we know. We know the caliber of players and of the whole team. We know that they're up there amongst the best. But we've got Austria being able to have such great form going into this Euro Cup, going into the previous weeks. So 